Hello and welcome back to CIS 165. I'm your instructor, Victor Campos. This week we move on to Chapter 8, Ajax and JSON. J-S-O-N, JSON, JavaScript Object Notation. This is something that you'll learn about in your chapter, so make sure you read it first before coming back to this. Let me show you what we're going to end up with. Here is yet another comic book superheroes thing. I'm going to click Get a Character. In this case, I have the Super Scroll up here. Origin and powers are listed with a cool fade animation. So we'll look at jQuery again. Get another character, Daredevil, Origin and Powers, and Spider-Man. So this is going to use the concepts of JSON, JavaScript Object Notation, because what's happening here is I'm loading character information out of a JSON file. This is a file that stores information in a certain way in a very specific format. Note also, for the purposes of this assignment, you're going to need to use Mozilla Firefox to get this to work. That's because Google Chrome has high security settings that make it difficult for this project to work easily. So even if you follow the code exactly and it's not working, the problem is most likely going to be Chrome. So do this lesson and test your project in Google Chrome. I'm going to get started. I'm going to set myself up as usual. Copy my code and set myself up in a week 12 folder. You might have been updating your Visual Studio code and now you've got a little gold icon instead of blue. Or maybe not. Doesn't quite matter. All right, so the way I'm setting up my HTML document at this point is to create a button that will let me get the character. This needs an ID. btn get car, get character. And then the results will be displayed in a div. Well, this is going to be a div that is a left and a right column. So we're creating a structure something like this, a parent div with an ID div to call, and then another div with another ID div left call, and lastly another div with another ID div right call. So we have a left and right column. I'll write some CSS to style that up. Back in the head block, style. Creating a pound div to call to affect the main parent. We'll say a width of 100%. Then a, an ID of div left call, where I will say float left, a width of 50%. Whatever's inside of that will be text aligned to the center. And then a div of right call, also float left, also width of 50%. I'm not going to align center here. All right, so this is all that I need so far for my HTML file. Next up, uh, I'm actually going to go up to File, New File, and we're going to create a brand new file. We'll start it off with two open and closed curly braces, and then we'll do Save As. I'm going to save this into week 12 and call it Characters. Dot J -S -O -N. This is a JSON file. It's a file written in a very specific format as how the chapter mentioned. Characters.json. I'm going to start off then after this to break these into separate lines. Then in quotes, all cars, space colon, space square brackets. We've got the key all cars with a value of an array. 
in JSON syntax. Double quotes and a colon. I'm going to break that square bracket, that array apart like that, and then create another JSON object, comma, another JSON object. I'll put those there as a placeholder because then I've got quotes name space quotes Spider-Man in my second item name again this time Daredevil now you do have to be very careful about how you write JSON it can be very difficult to keep track of your opening and closing brackets and curly braces and all of that so just be very careful about it so I've got my first field name spider-man back in the first JSON object comma enter tab okay then graphic there's a graphic linked to this field and this is something we're gonna borrow from the previous exercises HTTPS VMC Inc dot files dot wordpress dot com slash 2016 slash 10 slash spider-man dot ping so now spider-man field has a graphic attached comma quotes origin colon bitten by a radioactive spider. Next element, powers. What we're doing here is we're going to define two powers, so this will be in another array with another set of curly braces, so we can say P1, power1 is spidey sense, comma, P2 is wall crawling. So here I've, de I've developed a schema. I'm saving various characters, all characters. There's a name field, graphic field, origin field, powers field, with subfields power1, power2. So name, of course, Spider-Man, graphic is the link to that file, origin is that text, and powers P1 and 2 are there. Notice the specific way it's written. Follow the curly braces. That one encompasses one character, Spider-Man. That square bracket encompasses the two superpowers. And there are separations with commas everywhere until the final one. So we need something very similar for Daredevil. I could write it manually, or I can copy and paste. But be careful, because copying and pasting assumes you wrote it properly. So copying and pasting would be that I need all of this, every field, not that final comma, however. So I'm going to copy that and instead replace this Daredevil field. Because then I have the schema. I have the name, the graphic origin, and powers, and I have the right syntax of the right commas and so forth. I don't need a final comma here because I don't have any other character yet. Well, I'm going to fill in the items for Daredevil. So the name and the graphic points over to daredevil.ping origin blinded by radiation powers, radar sense, and martial arts. And I'll do one more. Now because I am adding a new character, I do add a comma after this block. So comma, enter, paste. No final comma because it's the final character for the moment. We'll say here this is Squirrel Girl. Graphic points to Squirrel Girl, Origin, Part Girl, Part Squirrel, Power 1, 
powers number one, squirrel language. Power two, unbeatable. So this is enough for the moment. This is my characters.json file. I've defined three characters. I'm then going to connect to this file in the JavaScript in the HTML file via JavaScript and load up these characters randomly. So back to the index.html file. What I need to do first is, before my custom JavaScript here, I need to connect to the jQuery library. So we'll start another script tag before my custom code with a source that's going to go over to https slash slash code dot jQuery dot com slash jQuery dash three dot two dot one dot min dot js. In my main code, I'll start to create some variables representing those HTML elements. So first, dollar l btn get car that is equal to the jQuery selector pound btn get car. Comma, I'm also defining l div left call. I don't need to define the whole parent call, just the left and the right. Comma, l div right call equal to the jQuery selector pound div right call. I'll end that for the moment, semicolon. I'll run this in the browser just to see if I'm on the right track. Now, if I run this in Chrome for the moment, I should get no trouble if I open up my console. Good. But further from here, I need to be running this in Firefox. Because when I try to connect to that JSON file, Chrome is going to complain. So I have Firefox installed, right click, open with Firefox, F12 here as well to bring up my console, everything looks fine there. Okay, back to my code. I'm going to add another variable. I can chain it with the previous one. This will be a little bit different. It's not jQuery based. So var file connection. This is going to be a variable that helps me connect to that file. It's equal to new space XML, all in capital letters, H, capital letter, TTP request. So be careful about this spelling here, capital XML, capital H, but then TTP lowercase, and then request capital R, open close parentheses, semicolon. So we're instantiating a new object, an XML HTTP request object, and storing it in file connection. This is a special kind of object that will let us connect to a file. Function fn get car, get character, parentheses, curly brace. So this will be our function to actually get a character after we press a button, the button that's waiting for us on top. Therefore, we will then create an event listener l btn get car dot on we're using jquery here so we can use a shorthand of on click in the event of a click then run the function fn get car so confirm this is working console log and say something like fn get car starts. If I run this in the browser, I expect to see that in the console. And again, I'm going to run this in Firefox. Refresh that. No errors. Click the button. Get some output. Function get car starts line 41. All right, so the magic is going to happen in this function. Next line. We need to set up a way to connect to the characters.json file. So it's all going to come from the file connection object. We're going to say file connection dot open. This is a method that'll get us started to connect to a file. We need to pass in several 
arguments first, however. First of all is get, in capital letters, comma quotes, the name of the file, characters.json, and then comma true. So we're saying the way we're going to connect to a file is via the get protocol, basically. Which file? Well, characters.json, and then comma true asynchronously. So we don't have to wait for the connection before we can pro continue processing our code. That doesn't actually get the connection started yet. That prepares the connection. Next up, to actually start the connection, file connect dot send. We're going to send the signal to start the connection, and we will not send any extra code along with it, or arguments and parameters. We're just saying start the connection here, basically. Eventually, we get the connection, so we'll say file connection dot on load equal to a function. So we've set up a way to connect to a file. We've then started the connection to the file. Once the data from that file loads up, run this anonymous function. So I'll break that apart. You can make a note here and on load after successful connection to the file. Well, what we're going to do after successfully collect, connecting is create a new variable called car object. This is all of the data of the character's file as an object equal to JSON in capital letters dot parse parentheses. We're going to convert into a JavaScript object our file connection dot response text property. So on successful connection on load, we get back response text. We get back all of the text that was in that characters.json file. So file connection is that object that represents the data, specifically the plain old text, which then gets parsed and turned into an object we can work with. To see how that looks, we can say console.log car object obj semicolon. Let's see if we were able to connect to the file and see the data. Refresh, press the button, function get cars. We've got an object with an array of three characters. Ignore this XML parsing error at the moment. Don't worry about it. If it really bothers you, you can press that JavaScript exceptions button and ignore it. So don't worry if you get that. But we have an object with three items. You can further see it by clicking object. And here we've got, okay, all characters. First object, Spider-Man. Second object, Daredevil. And third object, Squirrel Girl. The powers of Squirrel Girl are right there under powers, which is an array with a few more items. Okay, so we made a connection. Notice what happens if I try to open this in Chrome. Exact same code that I confirmed works in Firefox, but now when I try to get a character, it'll just say a big old scary failed to load the file, cross origin, blah, blah, blah. So don't try to do this in Chrome at the moment, although this would of course work perfectly in the real world. It's just that it's assumed that all of these files are up on a server, which they're not, they're on your computer. So if you get something like this, it's good enough. All right, so we do have data coming in from that other file. What we're going to do then is work with this data to then display it on screen. I'm going to back up and where I created that character object, I'll create another variable for a random character. Math.floor, rounding down, math.random times car object 
dot all cars dot length. So all cars comes from our JSON file. All cars. And we have one, two, three characters. So the length of all cars, three characters. Random number up to three, rounded down to include zero. We'll need a few more variables. So string name equals empty, comma, string stats equals empty. So I did put a comma here so that I can chain together the string name and stats. I'm going to display the name of the character and picture and then the stats. So after our console output, we'll continue to add string name. So plus equals, be very careful here, we're adding to the empty string. We're creating in quotes a new paragraph which then has an image src equals single quotes and we will display the particular image in this src which we'll have to break to be dynamic in just a moment but before breaking it this is going to be car obj dot all cars square brackets dot graphic in the square brackets random car so we're saying let's get the graphic from the JSON file graphic of a random character because we have either 0 1 or 2 in the character object which is all of this data and set it to the source of an image well this needs to be dynamic it needs to be processed as JavaScript not as HTML so we need to end the string right there plus continue it to run the JavaScript plus continue it and then double quote the rest now be careful there uh, visual code opened up two curly break uh, two two quotes there so be very careful open quote end quote and then back here end quote open quote and then we've got the single quote ending single quote but in between we've got the JavaScript next we're gonna keep adding a little bit more to the string name plus equals a new line, a new paragraph, where we're going to display the name of the character. So car obj dot all cars brackets dot name, the name property of the random car. That needs to be dynamic again, so end that quote plus the JavaScript plus the quote. So opening, closing quotes, and the rest. To actually display that on screen, I've got my L div left call. I'll write some HTML there. This string name. I'm going to chain dot hide and then dot fade in. Take two seconds to fade in the left column. Let's see what we get so far. Save that, refresh it in Firefox, get a character, there's Spider-Man. It randomly chose zero. Get another character, Spider-Man again, another character, Daredevil. So it might not be again very random because we've only got three characters to choose from but after doing it a few times, you should get the different characters. Again, if this parsing error gets in your way, you can just turn off that filter. Get another character. There's Squirrel Girl. Fades in in two seconds. Next, I want to display the text, the stats of the character. 
So very similar here. Give yourself some space. String stats is equal to plus equals quotes. Create a new paragraph. Origin car obj dot all cars brackets dot origin property random car the same random character we need to break this again into dynamic so and the quote plus the javascript plus the rest quote So that'll display the static text origin and the dynamic text origin. Continuing stir stats plus equals. This one's been, gonna be a little trickier. We're gonna create another paragraph, but we're also gonna create an unordered list, bullet points. So we're going to say powers. Break that so that the unordered list is on its next line. There are list items here, two bullet points. So we've got a paragraph, then we've got a break, an unordered list, and two bullet points. I'm gonna break this apart already for readability. So right after my unordered list here, quote plus new line, quote, and quote plus new line, continue the quote. Quote plus space quote, next line. So I'm breaking these up a little bit. I start my paragraph, break, unordered list, list item on its own line, list item on the next line, and then the end of the unordered list and the paragraph. Well, what I'm displaying in each of these list items is car obj dot all cars brackets random car dot powers brackets zero dot p1. Now what's happening here is, again, pick a random character, go to the powers field, so we go to the powers field. This is an array, but there's only one item in the array, both of these things. So we keep saying zero, and then the first power, so P1. This needs to be dynamic. So in that list item plus JavaScript space plus quote, continue the HTML. I'm going to save myself some effort by copying this line exactly and pasting it because all I need to change is P2. First power, second power, but it's often the same character object all characters array, powers array, but then the second power. And after that's done, I need to display it on screen in the L div right column. Write some HTML there, which is going to be string stats. Hide it, give ourselves some delay, one quarter of a second, and then fade it in, in one and three quarters of a second. So there's just a different sort of a timing in the fade. So let's check that out. I've saved it. I'm going to refresh it, get a character. I've got Squirrel Girl and her text. Get another character and so forth. So once we've got this algorithm, this JavaScript, we just add more data to the character JSON file and then it works. I'm going to add one more. So if I wanted to add a new character after Squirrel Girl, I need this whole chunk, but I need to add to what's already there. And notice the syntax. 
Spider-Man, comma, Daredevil, comma, Squirrel Girl. No comma on the final character. Well, I need a new character. So that's going to be a comma after Squirrel Girl. Then I can copy that chunk, the curly braces, and paste afterward. So I also have Jean Grey. Her graphic, Jean Grey. Her power, mutant with psychic ability. One of her powers is telepathy, as well as telekinesis. So now I've got a fourth character. When I go back and run my code, get a character, Daredevil, Spider-Man, Squirrel Girl, Spider-Man, Jean Grey. So the big idea with this chapter is Jason. JavaScript object notation. You see, we can create a schema to save data in a plain old text file in any sort of format that we invent. We can then connect to that data via JavaScript and then display it on screen. We don't even need jQuery to make this work. We've used jQuery for the simplicity of creating our objects representing buttons and columns and such, but the file connection is not jQuery specific, it's plain old JavaScript. So everything else here about .open, .send, onload and such, that's all plain JavaScript. We did use jQuery to write HTML to the columns, which we created in jQuery. And then we've got the on method. When we click the button, do the rest. So based on this project, you will have your homework. This has been Victor Campos for CIS 165. See you next time.